Before the video starts, I just want to tell you guys about my Discord server, which has been modified and improved for the members in the area. I will be able to communicate with you guys more, have group calls, show anything that I do for YouTube, and just play around the bots with you guys or just myself, because you don't know, I could probably just be bored out of nowhere. But basically, I've been um, just overall, I've been trying to get more members for it to be more active. So if you want to join the server and talk with me or other members, the invite link will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the video. What's going on guys, it's Fallen Angel 14 and welcome back to a brand new video and as you can tell from the title this is a Geometry Dash Texture Pack tutorial or just another GD tutorial thing in the series that I made a while ago with the boss fights that I stopped doing by the way so stop asking. But anyway, before I even get started with this video, I know Halloween, <laughs> it was literally a few months ago in last year. Um, but I'm la I'm a lazy dude and like never update my pro my wallpaper. Also, excuse the background noise because my bro baby brother's just like you know my baby brother he's four. But anyway, moving all that aside, I want to get started with the programs in order to make this easy for you guys. Now, no money is required at all. Like you don't have to pay for any of this. All you need is Paint.net and the Texture Pack Maker that makes it really easy to edit those files. There's a lot of files and it requires patience to make a texture pack, but if you're willing to do it, this is your key tool right here because this makes it all easy for you. So, I'm gonna open these two up, and of course you're gonna need Geometry Dash itself in order to access the files or just look at things. So, we're gonna get started with the icons. Now, before I even like get started with anything icon related, I'm gonna show you guys really quick something you must know about the icons. Now, number one, first of all, where is, okay, there it is, uh, give me a second, okay, number one is these icons, there's primary and secondary color, of course, but depending on the icon, there's only a certain limit you have with secondary colors, this, for example, the secondary color will only remain in here. You can't have it anywhere outside of this area. It will always stay here, no matter what you do. So when you make an icon for this cube, make sure that the secondary color remains here. Doesn't go out of the boundaries for this little centerpiece because it won't fill up here at all. Followed by this icon, this icon, this icon, this icon. This one, however, is good because as you could see, the if you get the like little square, if you just like have a little, if you just look at the outline of like the whole cube, you could see that the, the secondary color goes throughout the whole thing. So you could basically make any icon out of this and put a the secondary color anywhere you want because this one it works. This one you just don't need to have in a specific location. It could go anywhere for this one. As you can see, look, the white is like on the outside. This is just right here. That's it. But the white shows the whole area. I hope you guys are getting what I'm saying. But anyway. That's basically it. Just be careful when you're making an icon and which icon you're changing because this could this could either just waste your time with making an icon that well, just making a wrong icon. You could just instantly mess up after doing that if you don't use the right icon. So I just want to warn you guys because I encountered that problem. But anyway, to make an i how I make my icons is that I usually go into my icon kit I'll leave it if you guys don't know how to get that I'll leave a link in the description below for the icon kit of this but starting off I have paint.net obviously I have paint.net opened already and what you're gonna want to do is go to the icon that you want to edit and for this case I was just changing this one for the older version of this video but I, I just kind of did redid it because I messed up a lot so you're just gonna go to paint.net, just copy that file, open paint.net, go to new file. Now, it already has the dimensions for you since you copied the file, so you don't have to worry about putting in the dimensions or anything. But if you want to start off by scratch, just do 310 by 310. That's what I usually do because that's just the normal icon size for this. But, I also want to warn you before we, you do this. Huh, alright. Well, okay. So, let's just start off with this then. <laughs> I messed up. But anyway, you're going to want to load this. Make a geom For the Geometry Dash Texture Editor, obviously it will be in the description below. Uh, you're going to want to load it and access your resources folder for Geometry Dash. Now, if you don't know how to get there, 
It's under local disk C, program files 86. Then you go to Steam, Steam apps, common, geometry dash, and then you click resources, and then you press OK. Now obviously, it's going to ask you what sheet you want to load up. Uh, for the icons, you have to pick GJ Game Sheet 02, but you also have to be aware with the HD and non-HD version. The non-HD version is the low quality version of Geometry Dash when you set it into the detail mode. This is low, HD is medium, and UHD is high, but there's no high here, but I like to go with medium either way because it just suits me. It's, it's, just, uh, it's satisfactory for me. So you're gonna go to GJ underscore Game Sheet 02 HD, press open. And here are all the icons that are gonna pop up right there. These are all the icons. This is the mini icon, and it goes all the way up to 2.11, depending on the update of Geometry Dash you have, obviously. But I already, I already fixed everything. I already like made some of the icons, but I'm gonna show you one that I just worked on for the last video. I have the footage of it still. This icon was originally this icon right here, and the way I did it was. I grab. I just changed the layer for this. I just set it to to like a low opacity so I could see it still, but not to the point where like it distracts me from actually, you know, making the icon. So do that. I add a little background color so you could see it more clearly, and then from there on, I kind of just started using using the line tool to draw everything out, but. Before you even like make the icons, you have to make sure that the dimensions are good for this, obviously. Like, you have to make sure it's square. You don't have to make it exactly alike, you can make it three times bigger than it normally is. It will obviously downsize it for you and it will still look smooth either way. I just like to make it bigger, that way it looks more smooth and when it downsizes it can actually look like it's pretty decent. Otherwise, if you like try doing it 60 by 60, it'll look all pixelated and we obviously don't want that, so I just do 310 by 310. And usually, for the properties, if you guys want to like make your own icon, keep it at 15 for the line tool or just the square tool in general. This one, and yeah, it goes like this. And you just make sure it just stretches out to the borders of the icon or the yeah, borders of the photo. So just go here. Nice. All right. So basically, you just you could just start. You could just use this as an outline. It depends on how you want to start. It, honestly, you could just use the line tool and start drawing things. Obviously, it's a little slow because I'm I have not the best computer. But yeah, you could use icons to draw. And I will now show you guys the foot. I will show you the guys the footage of what it was like drawing my icon for this one. So I hope you guys enjoy that, and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little clip. So this is basically the icon fully finished. Obviously, this is the primary color, however. Well, I'll just set this. I'll get rid of this so you can actually see. Okay, this is the primary color. As you can see, the white and gray area represents the color and everything. This is the secondary color. So as you can see, I didn't I didn't like fill this up with color at all because it will set that as the, um, the primary color. So I opened up a new file, same dimensions, and tried to match it. 
just basically match the photo with uh, this. And as you can see, it, it doesn't it doesn't look bad, you know. It, this is the secondary, so like, for example, my colors are dark purple and yellow. This area that's white will be dark purple. This right here is yellow, or just this empty area right here that you see. And yeah, and the glow, the way I made the glow is I basically, um, you know, uh, I just copied the file, opened up a new file, and instead of making a 310 by 310, I did 330 by 330, yeah. And I kind of just pasted it. Jeez, that was not good. Okay, wait, give me a second. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And of course, I have plugins, so making this was pretty easy, but I guess I'll try to help you guys ma doing, do it manually? Question mark? Okay, so just do center both. That's also a plugin. That's not actually in Paint.net. You have to download these plugins by yourself. But um, yeah, that's basically right there. That goes right there in the center. Make sure you center it properly if you don't have the plugin though, because one simple slip up and like it'll just be off proportion. So yeah, let, let me just delete this right here. So let me copy this file again. Let me paste it back into the bottom layer. Stretch it out here. Stretch it out here. Stretch it out this side too. You want to make sure it just goes around everything. Okay. So I already fixed, I stretched it out. I'm going to go to adjustments and go under HUE saturation. I don't know how to pronounce that. I guess Hui, Hue. I'm sorry, art people. And yeah, I guess this is the closest it'll get. This is the closest it'll get to being good. Of course, it doesn't look as good as the original glow, but it's manageable. And from there on, I just grab the eraser tool. And just erase around the areas where you see is being... Just erase, just erase the areas where you see white in the holes and there that's basically it of course it doesn't look the best with glow this glow doesn't look the best obviously because it just looks weird like as you can see through here it just gets skinny and then gets thick and then it gets skinny again it just yeah I recommend getting the drop shadow plugin this right here it's really useful but uh yeah it's basically it and when you save your icon hold on let me just let me just grab that again, that file, instead of undoing everything. Oh jeez, that looked hideous. Alright, well that's that, that's the original glow I had. So, uh, once you have that done, you're just gonna save these separately. Save them in a separate folder for just in case when the game updates and you guys wanna update your texture pack again. You can always just, you know, just open up the file with this texture pack creator and implement them again. It's not that hard. So, you're just gonna save it. I already saved it. I saved it as icon 15 in parentheses 1, icon 15 in parentheses 2, 1 represents primary, 2 represents secondary, and then for this parenthesis I put glow, and then from there you open up the Geandra Texture Pack Creator, you go to 01 first, this is the primary color area, you go to import, you go to object and then you put import, give it a second. And then you just look for your file that you saved. It's right here as you can see, but I don't, I'm not going to click on it again because I already put it in. There's This is the second one, secondary color, you know, just repeat the process, object import. And the glow, you're going to have to do this one differently because it's no longer in the game sheet 02. It's moved to the glow sheet, but I checked with this software already and it doesn't show the glow at all. So you're going to have to do this one manually. So after you're done with placing both your icons there, go to save. And this should be saved under your resources now. And now, go into the Geomdrash folder. And the easiest way to get to that is open up Steam. Go to your library with, with all your games. Right-click um, Geometry Dash, Properties, Local Files, Browse Local Files, and it should pop up immediately. There we go. Right here, you want to click Resources. Scroll down and look for HD glow. Look for the HD version of the glow sheet, obviously, because 
as I explained earlier, it depends on the quality. So, glow sheet should be around here, right here, okay. This is UHD GJ Game Sheet Glow Sheet HD, there it is. So you're gonna copy this. Open up a new file after you copy it, and like I said, the dimensions already should be there since you copied it. Put OK. Paste it in there. And this is all white, so I don't have to worry about using black as the background color this time. So I'm gonna use black for the background color. There we go. And uh, now you kind of just zoom in. And you have to make sure to look for the, the glow for the icon that you originally had. So as you can see, this is the shape right here. You have to look around, make sure you find the right glow. And I already found it. It was right here. Uh, where is it? I just lost it. It's right here. And the size for that you're just gonna go to image for this for the glow resize set it to 64 it's 65 but when you put it in the game for some reason it it just cut off oh my god all right i'm back that was uh that was interesting but let me just redo that step because i already lost track of what was going on so like i said the glow's right here you're just gonna go under image put resize put it to 64 and like I said it's 65 originally but when it opens up in the game it just cut, it looks like it just cut off some of the glow at the edges so I do 64 by 64 go here to the game sheet and just look for the glow that you want to edit obviously you have to make sure to be careful paste it there and line it up I'm just gonna use this glow for this glow as an example because it looks just like the one that I changed but yeah just make sure it like lines up properly you know you want to make sure you get in pro in the area see go one down there we go as you could see it looks a little smaller but that's the, that's the purpose that way it doesn't look like it's cut off in the game and then from there on you're just gonna wanna delete the original so go back on the original layer go here delete and there's the new file delete the black background because if you save it like that it's going to be Everything's gonna be black. All the icons are gonna have black in the back of them. And when you're done with that, you just put save as. Of course, make sure you save it as a PNG, not a PDN. And under the resources, you're just gonna look for... Where is it? Under the resources, you're gonna look for GJ... Game Sheet Glow HD. And you're just gonna click on it. It's gonna ask it exists you want to replace it you press yes and then it's gonna ask if you want to flatten it just put flatten and I'm not gonna do this obviously because I just changed the glow that I wasn't supposed to but I hope you guys got the idea so I'm gonna cancel this because I already did it and then once you're done with that you could open up geometry dash and see what you have created so I'm gonna go here open up geometry dash and I'll see you guys the moment it starts now, as you guys can see, I'm in Geometry Dash. Of course, this texture pack still a work in progress, but you guys have an idea of what it looks like. But, this is basically what the icon looks like if you did everything right. You see, the primary color is alright, the secondary colors are alright. And if you got, and it's even playable, obviously. I'm gonna go into Stereo Madness really quick. Also, I have the 8-bit music for copyright claims, so... Joke's on you, YouTube. I came prepared. But yeah, that's basically it. And that's basically the icon tutorials right there for you i really hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, i hope this tutorial helped you too helped you too and if you guys ever like plan on making a texture pack after watching this you guys should let me know in the comments section and i'll if i'll probably like consider making videos or videos basically showcasing those um texture packs and i wouldn't mind doing it honestly but i really hope i in um it inspired you guys that's the word i hope i inspired you guys to uh create something that i um i showed you because honestly, texture packs, they take a lot of time and patience, but it's worth it in the end. Because you get to, you basically just get to see the beauty of what you made, the, the, the outcome is amazing, and I definitely don't regret any of it. So, um, if you guys want to, if you guys have any more, I can't even talk anymore. If you guys basically have any more suggestions that you want for creating a texture pack, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely be able to show you. I will definitely record it and show you guys how I do it. 
and with all that being said that's the end of the video like i said all links in this all links for everything that you need will be in the description below i hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always stay fallen